Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I will be showing you how to edit a vector file. Now, first things first, let's understand what a vector is. This is a very commonly asked question that we receive here at Becky's Graphic Design. And first I will explain to you what a vector is and what a raster is. Now both a raster and a vector are different types of file formats. One of the most common file formats that you have heard of is probably a JPEG. JPEGs are most associated with photographs, uh, various images that you find on the internet, um, and it is a highly compressible and easily shared image. It doesn't take up a lot of room. The reason that this is, is because a JPEG is made up of pixels. It's kind of like a paint by number, but with little tiny squares that your computer makes. Now when you go to expand a JPEG, a raster image, there are only so many pixels of information there. So when you scale it up, the computer has to guess when it fills in those holes, which is typically why you see those images become pixelated or blurry around the edges. On the other hand, a vector file, normally known in Adobe Illustrator as an Adobe Illustrator file, or an EPS, which is an encapsulated postscript file, uh, an SVG is also considered a vector. The difference with a vector is that this image is drawn using math and Bezier curves. So this means that a point is placed here, a point is placed here, and another point is placed here, and so on and so forth until the shape is drawn. Now the computer keeps track of these points and where they are in reference to each other, and then the computer will continue to redraw over and over again, no matter how big or small you resize that vector. Uh, the computer has the information it knows where those points are supposed to go, and it can just keep redrawing them over and over again forever. Unlike the raster, where the computer has to guess, there is no guessing in the vector world. This is why vectors are preferred by graphic designers all over the world for logos, billboards, say even stamps, because you can take a single vector image and you can make it as teensy tiny as a stamp image you need for an envelope, or you can blow it up as big as a billboard and you will never lose your resolution no matter what. Now that we've established what a vector is, let's go find some vectors that we can use. I'm gonna be looking on free pick today. This is where we get a lot of our uh, vector artwork from. I'm going to tell FreePick to look only in the vector section. And let's just scroll through and see what we got here. I've gone ahead and pre-downloaded some vectors. Let's go ahead and open those up. When I download a vector, generally it will be saved into a zip folder. So let's go ahead and open up one of these zip folders. I'm going to double click on it, and then I'm going to double click on this EPS folder or file. This is an encapsulated postscript file. I'm going to double click on that, and it will become open in Adobe Illustrator. Many times older Illustrator files will give you this warning here about nine slice scaling of symbols. Just hit yes and bypass it. Here we have this beautiful zebra stripe image with some triangle polygon shapes on top. So let's say if I'm editing this vector image and I want to change the color of the stripes. I can't seem to click on them. What's the problem here? First things first, go and check your layers panel. Over in the sidebar, let me get my head out of the way. This is the layers panel. Scrolling up, it will show you the layers of each of the vector items in this scene. If we look down here, this is the stripes. So I'm going to 
reformat these and move these around so I can actually select them. Currently, I cannot select the zebra stripes because the polygon triangles are in the way. So I'm going to click on the polygon triangles layer and drag it down below the stripes. Now, when I return, I should be able to click on those stripes. Yep, there we are. And I should be able to edit the colors using the gradient swatch tool. Now that we're able to click on the zebra stripes, we are able to edit them over here with the gradient tool. I'm going to double click on this orange one to open up the editor, and then I can make it whatever I want. We could even make it deep, deep black or white. So this is an example of layering. Double check to make sure that your layers are in order so you can select things that are underneath other layers. This is a really nice looking vector from FreePick. It looks realistic, and the nice thing is that we can scale this up as big as a billboard and it will never lose its resolution. But let's say we wanted to change the color of that Wi-Fi symbol. I'm clicking around, but I can't seem to click any individual items on this page. The reason being is that everything has been grouped so that it will maintain its location on this canvas. To ungroup something, right click on the group and scroll down to the option that says ungroup. Now that we've done that, we should be able to click on individual items. We can see that the phone is now separated from the background, but we may need to ungroup again in order to get to the icons. So I'm going to right click again and click ungroup. And now we are able to see those symbols, which are contained within their own group. If I wanted to edit only the Wi-Fi symbol, I would need it to be ungrouped. So I'm going to right click yet again and ungroup the whole thing. Now that Wi-Fi symbol is all on its own and we can go over to the gradient slider and change it. Let's make it into a bright pink. This is a pretty looking vector from FreePick. When we click on anything in the canvas, we can't seem to select individual items. So number one, let's right click and see what we got going on. We see that we have a clipping mask. What a clipping mask means is this. It's essentially like a picture frame. Let me draw an example. Let's say I take this ellipse circle and let's say that I have a rectangle. Now I'm going to draw that rectangle on top of the circle and I'm going to convert it to where it only has a stroke. Let's give it a black stroke so we can see it separately. Next, I'm going to select both of these items by drawing over top of them. And I'm going to right click on both of them and I'm going to tell it to make a clipping mask. Now, that rectangle has become a box in which the circle sits. And this circle is actually editable inside the clipping mask. If I double click to enter the mask, it will show me the items inside. Now, I can stretch this circle and click back out in the negative space to exit the clipping mask. And we can see that the shape of the circle has changed inside of the clipping mask, but it is only showing what is inside the border of that frame. So knowing that, if we go back to this vector image, this image is contained within a clipping mask. So we could double click to enter what's inside, or we could click on the whole thing right click and click on release clipping mask. Now we can see everything that is contained outside the border of that canvas, including the whole paintbrush and all of the paint splatters. And next, let's change the color of the paint splatters. Looking at these, um, let's right click and see what's going on. We're going to tell them to ungroup and ungroup again and ungroup again. I don't seem to be getting down to the bottom of things, so let's go and check the layers. I'm gonna pull down this layer tab and we're gonna have a look and see what's going on in here. At the very bottom, let me zoom out so you can see. Let's 
At the very bottom of the list, I see there's color contained here. I'm going to open this up and drop it down. And drop down the centerpiece again. And I'm guessing this is what we're looking for. These circles uh, allow you to select something. I'm going to click on it so that that portion is highlighted. I'm going to back out. And now we can see that we have found the rainbow gradient. That's where it was contained. We can go to the gradient tool now and we can edit that gradient. I'm double clicking on this color and then changing it to whatever I want it to be. Okay guys, I hope that helped. Um, if you liked this video, leave a comment below. Go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Hey, we're halfway to a thousand now, not too bad. Thank you guys very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.